Could a few genetic tweaks turn a modern wolf into a prehistoric super predator? The bone-chilling howl of the dire wolf hasn't been heard for over 10,000 years until now. Imagine a predator that vanished from Earth over 10,000 years ago, suddenly reappearing in a modern protected reserve. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into a story that sounds straight out of Jurassic Park. Scientists at a company called Colossal Biosciences claim they've brought back the extinct dire wolf. Yes, the same creature's Game of Thrones fans will recognize, though real ones didn't grow quite as large as their fictional counterparts. Join me as we explore Colossal Biosciences' bold claim. Is it true science or just clever hype? Let's find out. All information in this video based on the most recent research. Links are below the video in the description box. In October 2024, the world was hit with a bombshell headline, Dire Wolves Are Back, not in fiction, not in fossils, but in flesh and blood. Colossal Biosciences, a Dallas-based genetic engineering company, made waves when they introduced Romulus and Remus. Two genetically engineered wolf pups, they claim, are the first de-extinct dire wolves. Just a few months later, in January 2025, a third pup named Khaleesi joined the pack. These pups are more than just cute canines. According to Colossal Biosciences, they're the result of cutting-edge gene editing, ancient DNA recovery, and one ambitious goal, to bring back a species that vanished over 10,000 years ago. Right now, they live in a 2,000-acre ecological reserve at a secret location, complete with natural dens and 24 hours and 7 days per week veterinary care. They are projected to grow up to six feet long and weigh around 150 pounds. They have distinctive white coats and vocalizations that Colossal says match what we know about ancient dire wolves. Colossal Biosciences calls them the luckiest animals on Earth, but are they really dire wolves or just upgraded modern wolves in prehistoric clothing? So, how exactly do you bring back a creature that's been extinct for over 10,000 years? Magic? Are they movie props? Not quite. The answer lies in cutting-edge science and a little bit of ancient DNA. Let's break down the real science behind the rebirth of the dire wolf. Recreating an extinct species sounds like science fiction, but the tools to do it are very real. So, how did colossal biosciences go from a pile of prehistoric bones to living, breathing wolf pups? Here's where the science gets fascinating. Most prehistoric creatures have DNA that cannot be extracted because of the age and condition of the remains. However, researchers at Colossal Biosciences extracted DNA from two dire wolf fossils, one about 13,000 years old, and another from a dense bone in the skull of a dire wolf found in a riverbed. This second DNA sample is a staggering 72,000 years old. From these, they managed to sequence this ancient DNA and compare it to the genomes of modern wolves. Their goal? To identify what made dire wolves genetically unique. But they didn't recreate a complete dire wolf genome. Instead, they took gray wolf DNA and modified it using CRISPR technology, which is essentially genetic cut and paste, making approximately 20 modifications to 14 different genes. This modified DNA was transferred to reproductive egg cells without any genetic material of their own. These cells were then developed into embryos and were implanted into healthy surrogate mother dogs, specifically large hound mixes. About two months later, three dire wolf pups were born. But while the visuals are stunning, some scientists argue that this isn't true de-extinction because the DNA, at its core, is still that of a modern wolf. That brings us to the real debate. And here's where things get tricky and a little controversial. Because despite the headlines, scientists are asking a bold question. Are these really dire wolves at all? 
In 2021, a major genetic study shook up everything we thought we knew about dire wolves. It revealed that these Ice Age predators weren't just oversized gray wolves, rather, they were a completely different species, even a different genus. According to DNA evidence, dire wolves diverged from their modern wolf ancestors and emerged on Earth over two and a half million years ago. That's a longer separation than lions and tigers. But genetically, they're more like distant cousins as opposed to close relatives. There are many differences between them. So when Colossal Biosciences uses gray wolves as the genetic base for their revival project, the result may look like a dire wolf on the outside, but on a molecular level, it's not even in the same family photo. It's like building a classic car from scratch, but using parts from a totally different model. Sure, it looks the part, but under the hood, it's a different beast. Is this scientific progress? A clever workaround? Or misleading marketing? And just because we can bring back something that looks like an extinct species, should we? As the line between science and nature blurs, a bigger question emerges. Are we playing God? or just trying to fix what we broke. Reviving extinct animals sounds like a noble pursuit, but it opens a Pandora's box of ethical dilemmas. These engineered pups didn't evolve naturally. They were created in a lab, raised under human supervision, and released into a fenced reserve. But will these dire wolves be free, or are they just part of a living science experiment? Colossal Biosciences isn't just trying to recreate the past. They say they're building tools for the future of conservation. Here's where the story takes an interesting turn. While de-extinction grabs headlines, the technology behind it might have more immediate value for endangered species conservation. Using similar techniques, Colossal Biosciences has already cloned four endangered red wolves, which could help diversify the gene pool which is necessary for reproduction of a species with fewer than 20 individuals remaining in the wild. They're also working to conserve white rhinos and have developed vaccines for Asian elephants. As Earth faces what many scientists call the potential for a sixth mass extinction, with predictions the planet will lose 30% of its genetic diversity by 2050, these technologies could help preserve species on the brink of extinction. As one colossal biosciences scientist explained, the tools we're developing on the path to reviving these species have immediate application to species that are not yet extinct. In this light, the Dire Wolf Project looks less like a Jurassic Park publicity stunt and more like a technological stepping stone toward addressing biodiversity loss. But this idea raises new questions. Where would these engineered wolves be released? How would they affect existing wildlife? And what happens if we get it wrong? It's not just about bringing back a species, it's about rewriting the rules of nature. And that's a heavy responsibility. Dire wolves aren't the only extinct species in colossal biosciences sites. They've already created mice with mammoth-like traits, working toward their goal of de-extincting the woolly mammoth by 2028. The dodo and Tasmanian tiger are also on their list to de-extinct. Also, these ambitious projects raise questions about resource allocation. Some conservationists argue the millions poured into de-extinction might be better spent protecting existing species and their habitats. Others see value in the technological advances and public engagement these innovative projects generate. However, by creating exciting new and headline-worthy creatures like dire wolves and mammoths, companies like Colossal Biosciences will surely attract both the funding and attention that ultimately will benefit conservation efforts more broadly. So where should these resources be allocated? Is the best path forward bringing back past species or saving those we still have that are endangered? So have dire wolves truly returned from extinction? The scientific consensus seems to be not exactly. What Colossal Biosciences has created are genetically modified gray wolves with some dire wolf-like characteristics, 
an impressive and exciting technological achievement for life, but not quite a resurrection. Perhaps the most valuable outcome isn't the animals themselves, but what they represent. Advancing technology that might help us prevent more species from disappearing indefinitely. What do you think? Is this the future of conservation? Should we focus on bringing back extinct species? Or saving endangered ones? And who gets to decide what counts as a real dire wolf anyway? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. Subscribe for more science content and check out our video on extinction and conservation efforts linked on screen now. Thanks for watching.